Hey everybody, Steve here, and this is video nine in my how to build an FPV racing drone series. I can't believe that uh, we're finally here. This By the end of this video, we will have done a test hover with this thing. So if you've missed any portion of the playlist, then please do me a favor and check the description below for a full list of all the videos that are contained within this series and please go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell because even though this is in the ninth video this does not represent the last video there will be more we still have a bunch of stuff to do but for our purposes here today we just want to do a test hover all right so uh, in front of me i've got my quad uh, with no propellers on it and uh, i've got a battery that we'll be plugging in in just a second i have my usb plugged into my flight controller and i'm going to go over to beta flight on the screen and hit connect and I want to tackle the last thing that we need to do prior to doing our checklist before flying, and that's setting up our modes. So this is what the modes screen looks like right here, and we're going to come right back to it. First thing I want to do is go to receiver, which means I have to plug in my battery. I'm going to turn my receiver on, and I'm going to plug my battery in. All right, so um, we're going to do modes in a second, but the first thing that I want to do is go to the receiver page, and I wanted to make sure that my throttle is working the way it should, my yaw uh, is working the way it should, my pitch is working the way it should, and my roll is working the way it should. In addition, when we first set up this uh, radio back in a previous video, check the checklist, uh, back in a previous video, we also set up this switch right here. And when I flip that switch, you can see it moving the AUX3 on our beta flight page. All right, so we've verified at this point that our receiver is uh, in fine working order. So we're gonna go to, where are we gonna go to? We're gonna go to modes, and we're gonna add two modes at this point. Um, first thing that we're gonna do is add a flight mode, and we're gonna pick angle. Angle is the easiest mode for beginners to fly in. Not only are we gonna pick angle mode, and we have to come down here and we have to pick aux 3 because that is what our switch is connected to. This area right here represents the spectrum. And I'll just show you something. When I flip the switch, look at the little orange dot. The little orange dot flies across to basically a different position. So what we're going to want to do is we want to always be in angle mode. So I'm going to have angle mode cover the entire spectrum. like so. Now, no matter how I throw the switch, we're in angle mode. Now, just by way of comparison, if you wanted to add horizon, which is the next easiest level, we can add that range and we can make that range start and finish like that. Also make it aux three. So right now, just by way of uh, right now, we are in angle mode and now we're in horizon mode, angle mode, horizon mode etc 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 but we're not going to do that quite yet what we want to do is we want to make angle mode our entire spectrum and then we're going to add another very very important one i'm going to add an arm and i'm going to also use switch aux 3. now the reason why i'm keeping them on the same switch is number one for simplicity's sake and number two we actually never wired uh, the sixth channel when we did our pwm setup all right so let's do this let's figure out where this thing throws to. Okay, it throws all the way to the end. So what I want to do is I'm going to go like this. And now, as of right now, I am currently in the unarmed position. And now I am in the armed position, which means the motors will spin up and the thing will fly. But none of this means anything until you come down into the corner and you hit save. All right. So you can see uh, the big red, the big red area there because um, I'm armed. Now I'm unarmed. Now I'm armed. Okay, so that is really all there is to setting up modes. And now that our modes are set up, we're actually ready to basically do a complete, I wanna, I wanna do a complete beta flight checklist. Make sure everything's set up the way it's supposed to be set up. And then we can go out and do our test hover. So let's start all the way back at the top of the screen. Okay, so let's go ahead and start all the way back at the top of the list and let's just do a quick rundown. First thing I want to do is go ahead and place your quad nice and straight, nice and straight and forward and as level as possible. And let's go ahead, it's been a long time since we've done this, let's, let's go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer. If your quad doesn't look exactly like it does on the screen in real life, then you can go ahead and you reset the Z-axis. And now we're going to 
check to make sure that when we move our quad, it does the exact same thing on the screen. Here's a roll to the left, a roll to the right, a pitch up, a pitch down, and a yaw. All right, so basically the screen is doing an exact representation of what we're seeing out of our quad in real life. So we are ready to move on. I'm gonna go to configuration. Now configuration, you'll note uh, from earlier videos that I've changed this to one shot 125. If you're not sure what you have, then just uh, take a look at the packaging on your ESC. It'll either tell you right there or it'll arm you with enough information to go to Google. You can do a Google search for the name and the brand of your ESC, throw in the word protocol. So like mine, for example, are DYS BL Heli Opto and then the word protocol, and you'll either find the information in an ad somewhere or you'll find uh, something from RC groups or something like that that'll tell you what you're running. All right, so that is one shot 125. Coming down here, I'm in PWM, which is what I need to be in. And if you're wondering why I'm flying in PWN, please, um, please check out the previous videos. There is a good reason for it. And now I'm gonna hit save and reboot. All right, I just wanna make sure that these kept one shot 125 and PWM, I guess I should probably reiterate that if you're using this FlySky FST6 and the receiver that came with it, you need to be in Betaflight 4.0.0. The latest versions of Betaflight do not support PWM. So if you've got a PWM receiver, jump back to Betaflight 4.0.0 or CleanFlight 2.5.0 will work with PWM as well. If you're running PPM or SBUS, you can run the latest versions without any issues. All right, so I saved and rebooted and we're still in PWM, that's good. I'm gonna come down to failsafe. All right, let's just make our failsafe is set to drop. Save and reboot. All right, let's go into receiver. Now, as you can tell, our props are off, definitely off. Our battery is plugged in, our radio is on. That's why it's chirping at us. And just double checking to make sure that throttle, pitch, roll and yaw are working along with our switch our switch is working as well so there's our check for that all right let's go to modes all right our mode switch is working notice i left it in arm i did that on purpose no props no props but we're going to come back to that all right and let's do let's do one final motor check notice no props i'm going to go ahead and select this little button right here and then one by one we can recheck our motors make sure they're spinning and make sure they're spinning in the right direction yes motor three yes and motor four and you can't see them spinning but I've already verified that they're spinning the correct way so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check this box again and that is pretty much everything we are now at a point where we can go out and hover but Let's do two things. Number one, go to your receiver settings. You want these numbers to be absolutely positively as close as possible to 1500, not the throttle, but the other three, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna mess with our radio. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna roll to setup. And this, this is something you wanna do regardless of what radio you have. Then I'm gonna push to enter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to something called sub trim. And you can see that I've already played with this, but when I move this, you can see you can see the roll is up to it's up to 1530 something. Okay, I don't want that. I want to bring this back. Let's see what happens if I bring it all the way back to center. If I bring it all the way back to center, uh, to, to center, you can see on the screen I'm at 1493. So let's try to get this thing as close to 1500 as possible. There's 480, 499, there's kind of bouncing around, and there we go. All right, so I'm gonna leave it right here. I'm gonna press to get to channel two. All right, so now when I ch move channel two, that is gonna affect my pitch. So as I move it up, you can see the pitch is going way, way up. There it's 1520. So I wanna bring it back and make it as close to 1500 as I can. All right, so there's 1500. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter there. Channel three, channel three. 
is my throttle. I don't want to mess with that. Keep my throttle at 1,000. Enter. And then channel 4 is my yaw. So as you can see, I turn it up. The yaw goes up. Bring it back down. And get it to 1,500. And check. And then we're going to hit OK. And then we're going to get out of the menu the rest of the way. Also, if you're using your radio for the very first time, it's probably set in the defaults, but you'll notice these four buttons right here. There's this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Just as we just set the sub trim, um, these are the trims. So if I push this up, look what it does to um, throttle. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna bring this back down until it beeps. All right, and then back, back to beep. All right, so you wanna make sure that you have the solid beep. You wanna make sure you're dead in the center. Now, for yaw, I'm gonna show you this screen right here. So when you're out and about flying and you decide to use these trims, then you'll see how the little, um, the little indicator move to the left of center. So as I, as I push it back to the right, I'm back dead in the center. This one right here, is for pitch and this one right here is for roll so make sure all four of them are centered and then I should have I should have done this part before I did the sub trim part but now we're, we're back to the screen we're, we're we're in pretty good shape okay so that's basically setting your trims and your sub trims to try to get you as close to 1500 as humanly possible and that will help your flight characteristics so now let's just say if you're if, if we're outside and your quad is drifting terribly to the left we're going to use this trim the roll trim and we're going to we're going to bring it to the right some okay and you do one beep at a time don't don't get too crazy with your beeps okay and then we center it if your quad is pitching forward you want to use this button right here and you'll if it's pitching forward you'll D dial it back some and if it's drifting backwards you can hear it go up okay you want to pitch it forward some but if all four of these are set in the center and all of these are at 1500 you should be pretty darn close I think at that point if, if you're really drifting or anything's really really weird check to make sure your battery's center and basically that the uh, the center of gravity on your your quad is is centered as good as possible and that's effectively what we're going to need to know as far as trims and sub trims all right so let's go ahead with our props off of course props off always off let's go ahead and pretend like we're getting ready to fly I've got my battery plugged in I've got my radio on and now I'm going to try to spin up the throttle and well nothing's happening nothing's happening at all darn well actually I knew that was going to happen all right so now we're going to troubleshoot why we couldn't arm so come to the CLI screen and type in S T A T U S and let's see what we've got here we've got three arming disable flags one called throttle one called CLI and one called arm switch okay well arm switch should be pretty easy to be able to diagnose because I have this set as armed on purpose to throw that flag so if I just flip the switch and then we go back to the CLI and hit status it got rid of arm switch incidentally if you can't find the CLI over here go up here and enable expert mode all right so we've taken care of one issue now what is throttle what does that mean well I don't know what it means so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Google search for beta flight arming disable flags and I'm gonna come down to the github with the beta flight wiki and I'm gonna click on it and check this out you're gonna get tons and tons and tons of information on not only arming but everything okay but description of arming prevention flags check this out let's see here what do we have we had throttle all right so here's throttle it says throttle channel is too high now, I don't know what that means lower the throttle below min underscore check well that's gonna require us to know what min underscore check is and so if you mouse over these little question marks you'll get a little pop-up telling you 
it'll tell you what the, what the actual values are. And if I mouse over this one, I see min check. And what did that thing say? It said lower throttle below min check. So let's go back to Betaflight. All right, so my throttle, oh look, my throttle's at 1197 because it's kind of up some. All right, so I wanna lower my throttle all the way down. And now my throttle's at 999 and my stick low threshold is at 1000. Well, that's gonna be kind of wonky if we go to setup and we look at the um, disable flags. You can see how throttle's kind of it's kind of blinking, and the reason for that is because it's bouncing around. So let's go back to receiver, and let's go ahead and make this. Let's make it 1100, and then let's go ahead and save. I don't know whether this is important or not, but I'm going to hit refresh, and then save. I don't know if you have to do that or not though. We've just made an effort to try to take care of two of those flags. So let's go back to the CLI. Let's type in status again and hit enter. Now, the two flags, the throttle and the arm switch are gone. We're left with CLI. The reason why CLI is showing as a flag is because we're actually in the CLI. Obviously, we're not gonna wanna fly with this thing plugged in and being on the CLI. As soon as we disconnect from beta flight, uh, we won't be in beta flight, we won't be in the CLI, and we will actually have zero flags. Now another little indicator is the little exclamation point. If I arm, then it will, the exclamation point comes on, and that lets me know that I can take off. I, I'm, I'm, I'm armed, and I can, all right, I can move my throttle, and these guys are gonna go, okay? Props are off. Props are off. All right. Having done all that, check for arm flags. I have no arm flags at all. All right. No props. That means I should be able to arm. And when I arm, when I hit that button, notice the little warning light illuminates. All right. That means my, that means my motors are live and they can take off. And there they go. So one thing that I like to do prior to flying is to try to get my motors going pretty slowly. And then I'm gonna pick up my quad and I'm gonna see if the motors are trying to counteract my movements. And they are. They are trying to counteract my movements, okay? So let's disarm. So that lets me that lets me know that's just kind of one more indicator that everything should be fine when I get up and get ready to fly. So we've made sure our motors are good, ESCs are recalibrated, we made sure our, our, our radio is doing what it should do, and we've got our modes set up, and we are ready to put propellers on this thing and go fly. Okay, let's talk about props. Now, so these props are kind of small. These are five inch props, I believe. I'd rather run the six inches like this but I came to realize that I don't have enough of these little, uh, I don't have enough of these little insets to fit with these motors. So uh, I'm just gonna, for the purposes of just getting something up and hovering, I'm gonna use these guys. All right, so now keep in mind something. This guy right here has gotta go clockwise, okay? So does this counterpart over here clockwise, whereas these guys are gonna go counterclockwise. So basically what you want is the leading edge of the blade. The leading edge of the blade is higher than the trailing edge of the blade so that when it cuts through the air it creates lift okay so make sure that when you spin your motors just look when you're spinning your motors that the leading edge is higher than the trailing edge so that one is on correctly this one's on correctly leading edge leading edge that one's on correctly and this one's on correctly you can also cheat all right make sure that your props are on uh, make sure that you can see these little letters on your prop. So that one says 5030R. And then if I spin this guy around, also hopefully you can see it, it says 5030R. And the words are written on the leading edge. If we jump over here to uh, motor number two, you can see that the writing is on the opposite side. Now, this one just says 5030, the leading edge. And then this guy right here is also gonna be 
a 50-30. I've gone through my checklist. I've got my props on. I know my motors are spinning the correct way. I know my props are on the correct way. And there's nothing left to do than get out there and try to do a liftoff. Let's see how it goes. All right, so it has been a few days since my last video where I was flying. Uh, we've had nothing but wind and rain here in the Carolinas, and we are right in the midst of the COVID-19 thing. So I've been limited to flying really only in my front yard, which really isn't that exciting. As far as this little guy's combination is concerned between the PWM and the FlySky uh, transmitter, it flew pretty good. And this one right here, this is my 280, and I'm going to be converting it to either PPM or S-Bus with my Tyrannus radio. I'm not sure exactly which one yet. And all the PWM equipment is going to go back onto the one of the school's drones here. Now, I know I owe everybody an FPV video as well, uh, and I've hit kind of a roadblock right there because the FPV equipment that was supplied with the school stuff is incomplete. And for mine, I've got an FPV kit on order. So we'll see which one I can remedy first. So please stick around, comment, like, subscribe. Video 10 is gonna be on the way, which is either gonna be FPV related or the conversion of my 280 from the PWM to PPM slash SBUS, whichever I can find a receiver for. So that's it. I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. See you in the next video.